Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game theater com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Before we do begin with the news, though, I'd like to start out with a short message to all of you, because we've actually managed to hit 56,000 subscribers today. I admit we're still fairly small compared to some players out there, but it is incredibly humbling to myself that we are still at 56,000 subscribers. That's an awful lot of people. If you were to put them into a room, it would be a bloody large room. <laughs> so it's still kind of strange to me to see like thousands of you sometimes in just a couple of hours on one of our videos. And ultimately, without you supporting this channel, without you viewing the channel, without you commenting on the videos and sharing the videos and helping uh, like our posts on social media, there would be no channel, there would be no content, and I would have nothing to review. So as much as we do, of course, review the hardware and we get to play around with it and tell you, you know, our opinion of it, ultimately you are responsible for allowing us to do that. So for supporting us on Patreon, for supporting us on social media in general, and just even if you just watch a video and you don't even like it, you know, you don't comment on it, you just give us the view, it still helps us out immeasurably and once again, I'd like to thank you very much for helping us out recently. But now let's go on to the news itself. And we're going to start things out with the RX 590, which was one of the things we expected AMD to demonstrate at the, well, Next Horizon event. And there was nothing. But the leaks continue. And a user on Twitter has leaked the benchmark performance of the RX 590 in Firestrike. So we're going to go over the scores and we're also going to go over the clock speeds as well. There are a couple of models. The power color is hitting 1576 megahertz for the core and 1645 megahertz for the boost frequency. The XFX model 1580 and 1680 for the boost. So we can essentially say that the RX 590 is hitting the 1650 or slightly above region. That's pretty good. And in terms of the graphics score then, Firestrike Extreme 7350. Of course, depending on the model of the RX 580 or 480 or whatever its predecessors uh, did vary the clock speeds and uh, therefore the graphics scores, but the 580 in general would get around the 6500, 6800, depending on how far you would crank it. So that is a nice jump. The one thing that is holding these cards back, other than obviously there is no additional compute units, is the memory speeds appear to be identical, which is a bit of a shame. I'd really have liked AMD to have increased the memory clock speeds a little bit, but of course, just because of what we're dealing with in AMD, ultimately just using this as a refresh and certainly not going to redesign and put in like a GDDR5 uh, X memory controller or even an R6 memory controller. Obviously, they weren't going to crank the memory clock speeds to the stratosphere or anything like that. But ultimately, it does slightly hamper performance. But still, it's a nice gain. And it's certainly not going to uh, make people upgrade from, let's say, a 580. Let's say you've got uh, an AMD Radeon 2080 or something even older. Then possibly, if you're looking for a mid-range upgrade, it might compel you to do so. There is also a rather fascinating article going around on Barron's, the website. I'll link it in the video description. In it, they had a phone interview with Dr. Lisa Su, who is, of course, the head honcho over at AMD. And during the phone conversation, her message was rather aggressive when it came to AMD's strategy for the CPU market. We're primarily focused just for now on the server side of things, just to be clear. They are sending a message to Intel, and that is that they predict that they will be gobbling up a rather large market share from Intel. So back in 2006, AMD were actually quite a force in the server market. They had around 25% of the market share. That was pretty good. In fact, if you were working in the industry back then, chances were good that if you did want to rent a server from someone, let's say to host your website or what have you, you might have seen a fair number of providers offering Optron solutions. But that was in 2006, and slowly over 2007, 8, and 9, and 10, and so on, AMD's uh, presence in the market did start to dwindle. And of course, now, uh, at the lowest, it was like 1%-ish. 
But during the phone interview, Lisa Su remained rather optimistic. She says, and I quote, my vision is to exceed that market share. Yes, AMD's previous peak was 25 to 26% share, but our current product map is better than the Optron, the 2006 chip days. We feel really good about where the performance of Rome will be relative to the competition. We expect meaningful revenue in 2019 from Rome, although second half is weighted. We want to show a constant track record of execution and we believe that we will continue to gain market share. There are a few who will deny that Zen 2 as an architecture looks really impressive. There are still questions, particularly around the consumer variants. So that would be, of course, the third generation of Threadripper and Ryzen 3000. We presume, of course, it's going to be called those. For all we know, it might be called Frog. But ultimately, we know that those consumer versions are going to be based around the Zen 2 design. And from what we understand, given what we learned about the front end of the processor, the actual execution units of the CPUs, and the changes that AMD are bringing upon the architecture, along with, of course, the obvious stuff that Server NM brings, AMD really do poise uh, AMD are actually in a really good position. In fact, there's a rather fascinating uh, image that uh, served the home uh, the website. I'll link their article in the video description as well, actually plonk, plonk together. And it basically compares Epic to Rome against the Cascade Lake SP from Intel. Of course, in terms of core count, 28 versus 64 isn't much of a competition. But while those certainly grab a lot of headlines, there are other things that the HPC and server market would also be as interested in. The number of memory channels, for example. Memory channels have gone from uh, 6 on Cascade Lake to 8 in Rome. Maximum memory per CPU is 4 terabytes compared to 1.92 terabytes. The maximum cores per 2 processor system, 128 versus 56. Optane persistent memory, though, is something, of course, that Intel do have. AMD are not disclosing whether they're going to be uh, offering persistent memory support or not. We also have uh, additional PCIe lanes for uh, Epic with 128 versus just 48 of uh, Cascade Lake. And, of course, we also have support for PCIe 4.0 as well. This is a really big deal because it means not only does Rome have additional PCIe lanes compared to the competition, but the PCIe lanes they do have, but the PCIe lanes they have are also faster as well, about twice the speed. There are, of course, the caveats of, well, it needs a PCIe 4.0 device to actually make full use of that. But even so, this is just something that's more future proof. With all of that said, it is still Intel. You cannot count Intel out. They have the resources, they have the talent, and they have the ability to execute and release very impressive products in the future. A year or so, AMD may have the advantage, but by the time 2020 rolls around, it will be a completely different fight. And we are making a lot of uh, guesses as well. Because ultimately, the benchmarks AMD have released, of course, ultimately will favor their processors. You can expect that. But it will be interesting to see how a myriad of different applications uh, will perform over both CPUs. But ultimately, I do feel that, at least for now, Rome will give AMD the advantage and will certainly allow them to gobble up some market of share from uh, Intel, which ultimately will help finance AMD and will trickle down to us as regular consumers. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of Turing news. This is a very small thing, but for those of you who are running a Turing card, such as the 2080 or what have you, one of the issues that has been plaguing the cards is very simple. High power consumption if you are using a multi-monitor setup. But this has been fixed with a driver update. So in short, you just go download the latest driver from NVIDIA, and now power consumption for Turing has been uh, normalized if you are using a multi-monitor setup. So I'm just saying to you, uh, if you do have a Turing GPU, feel free to download the latest driver to fix that small issue. Finally, there's some great news concerning the price of memory. It has gone down around 10% over the past several months. This is according to DRAM Exchange, who are a division of Trendforce. For example, 8 gigabyte modules have gone from just under 70 US dollars down to just about 60 US dollars, which is not too shabby at all. 
And the price, of course, is similar for four gigabyte modules and so on. So if you are looking to buy memory over the next several months, this is really great news. It didn't seem too long ago that memory prices were just absolutely ridiculous. So the fact that they are starting to diminish, particularly because, of course, of the holiday period. So if you are looking to do a small upgrade on your system or buy an entire new system and so on, and it's a pretty darn great time to purchase. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I shall see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and once again, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.